begin the design and I'm going to stitch from here all the way over the end with straight satin stitches and you can see the design colour changes are printed on so the central colour comes up here and then you change colour approximately where these lines are drawn on. So the first thread that we use is a single thread in the mid green which is indicated here in MG um, which is on the colour chart down here. So Katie I'm doing this with you in mind and I'm telling you <laughs> <laughs> that you're going to just slow down and think about how you handle the balls. Now these are not like um, the Appleton balls where it's a round and round wrapped skein. This is a hank that's folded and made into a folded skein. So I'm just going to remove the paper and actually this particular thread doesn't mind being handled. It's got a high content, a very smooth wool. I think it's Leicester sheep in this. So I open the hank out like that. And what you're looking for then is just to stretch the wools like that. And that keeps them straight and separates them from their little friends. And when you stitch with that wool, it will always be the same length. It won't twist on itself as much as it would if you didn't just do that little stretch. It's rather like hanging your clothes out before you wear them. And then you'll find that that unfolds again. So can you see that that's a really quite a big hang? Ideally, then you would have a clothes source or something to just hang your threads on. And I think next time we film, Karen, we'll have that in place. But today we haven't got it. But you can see that that length of thread is longer than my elbow here. So this is the time to decide do you want to just take off each thread as it comes and measure it to your arm as you normally would or do you want to cut it into stitching lengths? Now if your arms are slightly shorter than mine you'd want a third of that hank. So I would cut from here to about here for my stitch length but leave the longer length here so you can use that for your double thread which you can fold back. I know. <laughs> So I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> it's just, you know, eventually these things dawn on you. But, um, you know, if you're new to it, I wouldn't have thought about this when I was 30. But now, after all these years, I begin to think, I've got to get it sorted. So you look for the little bit that has a knot in it here, and that's the end of your threads. So I'm just going to snip that, and that's quite useful. Now, of course, the the thread, will, one will be on the outside and one will be on the inside of this hank. And it really doesn't matter in this case which one you take. But I tend to leave the knotted end that I've just cut and take the other end and just gently bring it round. So, so you, as I say, you, you can cut it or you can just take it off one at a time. But if you do that, you need to hang it somewhere. Otherwise, you can cut it and you can lay it flat on your table. So to take a single thread, first thing I'm going to say to you is that this thread is a two-ply wool and it's, uh, as is Appleton's, as is all embroidery wool, it's actually two threads twisted round each other. And you really need to see which way that thread runs. So I take my second finger, which on my left hand, I'm right-handed, and this is the one that I haven't been using for gardening. And I just take the last inch of thread and very gently, don't grip it too tight, just stroke it. And just think of really tickling a cat's ear or something, but you, you don't grip it, just stroke it gently up and then gently down. Now, you'll find that it's rougher one way than the other. Now, my thread that I've taken and you know, it depends which end you take or end you snip. So you need to test this. My thread is actually smoother going up. Now, if you think of this thread as a snake, this means that this is the tail of the snake and the smooth way of going through the linen will be from head first. So this means that every time I take this green, I'm going to put a knot in this end. So in a single thread, this this particular colour I'm going to take like this. So I would write next to the green, I'd write not, just K for not, perhaps. <laughs> um, so, and, and N for needle. So if it had been smoother going down the way, then I'd have the needle at this end. So I'm taking the uh, knotted thread and 
taking it and measuring it against my own personal stitching length, which is from the top of my finger to my elbow, which I have said so many times is my cubit. And then just snipping that off. And then I tend to just knot that again, just to show me that that end will be the end for the knot and the top end will be for the needle next time. So I'm just going to keep that neatly on the table. So I'm taking the gold plated needle for the single thread and threading it as usual. So all you do is fold the wool over the needle, squeeze that hard and push the flat head of the needle over the wool. Now, if you find it difficult to thread the needle, one way, just flip the needle over because needles have a right side and a wrong side. And on the right side, the needle eye is much bigger. So I'm going to flip that over. And I learned that from a 23 year old kilt maker in Scotland, Karen. So anyway, right. So there I have the needle and just a short return, about two or three inches coming over the top. That's what I call the return. And that little bit won't be used. The reason we don't have the return coming all the way down here, and this is something directed at Katie because she does like a long thread, um, <laughs> but it doesn't help you because this end rubs against the ideal stitching area. So this is your prime um, embroidery area here. So in fact, from about there to there is going to be on the front of your work. So if you have the return rubbing against it every time it goes through the minin, that's going to fluff. So take the return so it's much shorter and it goes down to there. Having thread my needle, I'm just going to take the seat frame and put the panel at 45 degrees under my leg. I usually put the seat frame between my legs because I like to feel centered. I just roll my shoulders back, a few exercises, just feel warmed up. It's very warm in here today, but um, still I like to just shake my hands out and just loosen up my fingers before I start. Now, to cast on, you can cast on in the next door feature as long as it's not more than an inch away. So I'm going to go to the strawberry. So I put the seeding stitches in as usual and then I'm hopping across to the opposite side so that the stitches I put in will just be contained by the, the, the thread that's gone across the back here. So I take it, the needle from the base and go down on the very top of the work and then move your thread to one side, doesn't matter which side, and take it down to the base and then up on the opposite side of your original thread, down at the top. So what I'm doing here is I'm going from side to side on the same leaf, but the journey when you're doing that, it's actually a lot shorter than going right round and in this very expensive thread and at a very expensive time when threads were incredibly expensive to buy as well as to dye, um, this would have been important. So I put in the darkest colour and then that is the centre and what you do next, you work up in the same way all the colours so the next green goes up here or up here, down, up here, down, up here, down. So you're working around almost a square shape, just carrying the stitches across the back at each time. Just casting off anywhere we can. And then when you've cast off in a color, obviously you just pull that tail and snip it off and pull the tail with the knot, snip underneath the knot between the knot and the linen and then get rid of that thread. And then I'm going to go down into the next colour. I'm going to work the next colour down and take the mid green, as indicated on the stitch chart, up there and down. Now I've done a classic thing. My return is too long, so I'm going to just going to shorten that a little bit, take it up to here. And that is fine. Right, so I'm going up on one side and up at the side and down on the other. So can you see I'm working from the base towards the tip on the left hand side here 
your lower screen and on your upper screen and working in the opposite direction. And this up and down and across the back means that that distance is much shorter than going right across the back. And at the time that this design was made, the silks and the wools and the, and the metal thread were so expensive to produce and so highly valued that uh, you never would waste any thread. Right, I'm going to cast off in the base here and come up and then snip the end of that thread at the top and the base and then work down through the colours. I'm going to go into the paler green now and you can see how this is building up and I just think this sort of lime green is a magical colour in wool. There's something about it not being shiny, it just absorbs the light beautifully and um, gives a real kick to any design. So I'm opening that out, snipping off the knot. You have to be really careful to do this. Just lift it away from the rest of the wheels. Leave the knot and take the end. Measure the length out and just see which direction this wool goes in. That is definitely going upwards. I'm going to take a knot at the end measure the length I want in a single thread and go to tip of my fingers and then remember this time to have my return just two or three inches long. Thread the needle and I just seen that I just stuck my tongue out then as I'm concentrating and my children when I was they were little used to love to mimic their mother stitching with her tongue. <laughs> just bitten between teeth. And I remember thinking in my early 30s that I was doing everything wrong, but actually there isn't really a right and a wrong. There are just different ways of doing things, especially in cruel work, but also in Elizabethan stitches as well. I'm just going to check that this is really tight. And if you look at the lines printed on, you'll see that sometimes they just slip down. And particularly here, you know, where you've been stitching here, and you just see that that's just a little bit hollowed out. So I might just reset up my frame um, after I've done this leaf. But you never, never slacken the frame between uses as well. Uh, I don't know why that became such a thing, but quite often people say, oh, they were always told to loosen their frame. But if you loosen your frame, you have to re-tighten it next time and it's never going to be the same again. So I wouldn't tighten and, lo and loosen your frame as a practice. I don't think that's a terribly good idea. So if you look at the um, piece that I've stitched, you'll see how much of this green I've used. And you can use your own eye to see if you like this green, you might want to use more or less. So when you get to the edges, you might just prefer to go up and down on each side because obviously the journey across is the same as the journey up and down the sides. And just use your needle to just tease that across or your fingernail. And just finish off the other side. So try not to let these last few stitches on a shape like this get too small because then you end up with a little sort of Martian's ears, if you know what I mean, if they're too small at the ends. So just keep that quite big like that. And if you make a mistake like I have, you just stitch over the top and just keep stitching until it looks gorgeous. So sometimes it looks like a mouse has just been nibbling at the edges. But the thing you're going to do next is going to improve all that. So I hope you like those colours because the next thing we're going to do is the bayer stitch over the top of that. Again, you can cast on in the, um, in the branch here or in the strawberry or the next door strawberry. And what we're going to do now, we're going to make an angled stitch uh, that crosses over the very center of that area. So the original stitch you made in the very darkest green, if you just aim for that and you just cross over the middle. So just one thread really. Now to get the angle, 
to make it easier, just lay your thread like that and just pop your needle in. And you can either go down one side doing the same thing or do what I'm doing, which is working this across from one side to the other. So this action is really leaf stitch, but stitches are named in different countries and in different books in different ways. So, and some stitches have rather forgotten their names, I think. But in the Bayer tapestry in the 11th century, using satin stitch below, then a single line and then couching that single line down is a device used all the time. So I'm going to now just go over each of those lines, just at intervals, like that, just to hold them in place in the same colour. Just two or three stitches on each line are enough. And if you've made any errors around the edge, then um, you know this is the time to hide them with these sort of stitching. And of course, you're going to work all the strawberries in this same stitch. So just, uh, Katie can continue and follow the stitch chart and enjoy using this very special thread that I know she enjoyed so much when she made the Red Book Rabbit.